So let me talk a little bit about artificial intelligence and autonomous technologies. And this is where, you know, I mentioned it before, it's people who have, some people like Stanislav Petrov who disobeyed orders, who stopped the use of nuclear weapons in the past. Applied machine learning and autonomous systems would result in an increased speed of warfare. We're already seeing this. It means there's a shorter decision period where decision makers choose whether to launch nuclear weapons or not. Right now, that decision period is estimated to be between four and eight minutes. Okay, if you really, like, hold that for a second. That's 10 minutes between the decision to end civilization as we know it or not. Add another 30 minutes for the bombs to get where they're headed. 15 minutes after that for the fire to be returned. It's an hour or an hour. It's a pressing issue and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's quite sobering. Back in the eighties, there's a lot of talk about this fear of the dead hand. So it would be the, this automated system that would fire all remaining nuclear weapons, everything, empty the arsenal, if it were triggered to do so. That debate about this as a, as a good idea, it's not over, it just, it's just resurging. In the last few years, because of increased automation within the, the nuclear, within the, the industry, because of increased automation um, of, you know, around missiles, because of concerns about being able to react quick enough should a hypersonic missile be coming in, that debate isn't going away. And that's a, a process. The, or the process in which advanced machines sort of choose a course of action, it's becoming opaque. And as machine learning is advancing, and you know, machine learning is advancing, it's quite amazing. Um, but the, it's advancing to a point that kind of these processes are often called like black boxes. Um, and it's difficult for humans to check how and why a machine recommended a certain course of action to understand if that machine has actually been compromised or not? Is it malfunctioning? Is it the programming that resulted in what could be an unlawful or unintentional outcome? You gotta ask yourself, will today and tomorrow's nuclear operators be as skeptical of technology as that guy I mentioned before, Stanislas Petrov was? Um, will they be influenced by automation bias and be overtly trusting of new technology? Are they kind of going, well, you know, my phone works great. So I'm sure all tech's great. Um, sometimes we have fall into that, you know, or, hey, I'm sure the tech guys, you know, if that person's sitting at the missile silo who has to turn that last key, it's like, well, you know, I'm sure the tech guys, they all figured everything out. I'm sure that they've got it sorted. And as satellite and other intelligence detecting systems become more advanced, it's gonna be difficult to keep things secret that used to be secret. Um, and again, the deterrence that we know today, this use of nuclear weapons in national security strategies um, is predicated on a combination of just a little bit of transparency and just a bit of secrecy.